As for other than the Prophet ﷺ, are they able to hear the punishment of the grave? There are some people who had said, have heard, and have heard. But Ibn Taymiyyah says, it is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes, he makes some people able to hear something that is either for them to wake up or for others as well to consolidate or to strengthen their iman. But we're not going to prove our religion through a hearing or a tape recording or something like this. We're not going to do that. But this is to strengthen your iman. Like this person who, for example, an uncle from Pakistan who had cut an abajin from the middle. If the word came inside Allah, okay, if you've heard Allah, alhamdulillah, khair inshallah, maybe strengthens your iman. But don't prove your religion through an abajin. Because it was taking the mick out of us. It's being scolded from us. It was, we were scorned because of this. In the tabloid, I've seen the newspaper, myself, and this uncle is holding the abajin, which says Allah, and it says in the title there, an Asian trying to prove his religion to be true through an abajin. Can you see the title? Because another person who'd come with another abajin, shaitan, is the Lord. Because you could make any word if you were like. So be careful. It's for you to strengthen your iman. <sighs> Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, he says, we have heard that some of the, or we knew that some of the scholars, had, some of them had heard that this, the, the, the punishment of the grave, was able to be heard from some people. Well, we could say that, inshallah, alhamdulillah, this is to strengthen our iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could make these people to hear it. They didn't know about it, but we know about it. Now we're not able to hear, we can't hear it now at the moment. It's inside the land, we can't hear it. But at that moment was heard. Is it allowed for it to hear it? Well, it is not. What the Prophet sallallahu didn't say, we're not allowed. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he had said, Wallahi, had it been that you will not bury one another, I would have made a supplication to Allah, so you could be able to what? To hear it. Now what happens when you hear such a thing? What should happen to you? Two things. The, the fear, and you should be happy. Why you should you be happy? Because this affirms your belief. Prophet ﷺ was talking about the Dajjal. Talking about the Dajjal to the companion, talking about the Dajjal. But one day, Tamim is dead. Great companion who was a Christian that embraced Islam. And before he embraced Islam, by the way, he was touring the sea. Something happened to him. He was seeing something, never seen it. Something like an animal, human being, with hairs. He doesn't know what it is. Who are you? She said, I'm just Sasa. What is it, just Sasa? She said, Let me take you to that person. So she took them to somebody who's massive and he's been chained. His neck and his head towards his hands and his feet. And this person is huge. They asked him, who are you? He said, before I say to you, can I just ask you the following question? Is that person was sent to the Arab? Talking about the Prophet Muhammad. He said, yes. Did the Baysan, Baysan is a place in, uh, in, 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 in Palestine, Palestine. Did the Baysan orchards start giving fruit? He said, about to. Not yet. Did they lose the fruit? He said, not yet. Did the Tabaria, Tibris, Tibris water? Is still there? He said, yes, there is still, still water. He said, verily, the Baisan orchard is almost about to finish and cease to give their fruits. And verily, the Tibris water is, about, is almost about to get dry. Who is that person? The Jan. They came to the Prophet Wasallam when they embraced Islam. And they told him what happened to them the day before they embraced Islam. Prophet of Allah, when he was he prostrated to Allah, and he was so happy. And then he came to the mosque. Addressing the people, not in Jumu'ah, normal day. And as soon as he sat down, the as he stood up to the people, he started smiling. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, inna alhamdulillah. And then he started saying, remember what I was saying to you about the Dajjal? This person came from such and such. And I was affirming what he's saying. From such and such island that he had seen, that, they, that the wave took them to this island. They don't know where it is. And they have seen this person. And he's the Dajjal. He is the one. If he comes out, I am alive. I will be your protector. Otherwise, save yourself from the Dajjal. So we should be happy. If we hear something like this, Alhamdulillah affirms our belief. But at the same time, Shudriz will make you what? It's what to thrive. 
to be eager to do as many good as deeds to protect yourself from the punishment of the grave. Is our program continuing or do we have a break in the middle? We'll continue inshallah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. What is the, how is the qabr na'im and his adab, the punishment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the hadith, which we have mentioned at the beginning, hadith al-Bara ibn Azim, after the person who's been questioned, let's talk about the believer now. He's been asked the question and he answers the questions. He answers the questions because of his deeds, not because of like in some of the country, in India, in Kerala, a person who knows he's seen it with his own eyes, that when they bury the person, the Muslim there, they put a bottle with him, and inside that bottle, which is a transparent one, the answers of this question, <laughs> Allah, Islam, and Muhammad. So the person is dead and he's like that. So is your Lord, he's got the answer to cheat. It doesn't work like that, brother. Wallahi, it doesn't work like that. It's your deeds makes you to get the answer. This is by the way true, it's not a joke. The person is a doctor, and he's, he's a consultant actually, and he said he's seen it in Kerala. These people, how, how, how naive and idiots they became. And simple-minded to believe such a thing. A simple bottle is going to save him? That could be the most wicked person on the face of the earth. Brother, don't forget the bottle. In front of him, he said, I could know the answer. Well, you don't need bottles now. They don't know about the technology. Could put him, what? An earpiece here with Bluetooth. Give him the answers as well. You never know what people can do these days. I've been to the cemetery, I've seen number plates, brothers. Have you seen them? Yes. Number plates on graves. Is he going to drive in the grave? He's got a number plate, a special number plate. One person started it, the next time I went to the graveyard, more than one person. One person started with a windmill. You know the windmill? The, the paper windmill. Started with one, one colorful one, another one's got another one, a third one's got one other one. I come to the, regularly to the graveyard for burial, and I, every time I come, something's new. Number place? Wallahi, this is something, subhanAllah, I couldn't believe it. Number place? Number place, Sheikh. Number place on the grave. And they're screwed. They're making sure. So you're going to be addicted as a driver. Is that how the way to save yourself from the fire? Prophet Sallallahu he said, Yunadi Munadi Minas Sama, a caller will be calling in the skies, in the heavens. And Sadaqa Abdi, my slave, had told the truth. When he said, My Lord is Allah. My Prophet is Muhammad. And my religion is Islam. Allah would call and say, Fa'afrishuhu min al Jannah. Give him his dwelling in paradise. And Albisuhu min al Jannah. Give him his clothes from paradise. Waftahu lahu babam ila al Jannah. And open an opening, a gate for him to paradise. Then, as soon as that gate opens, from paradise, the smell, the fragrance comes. And his grave will be enlarged. It will be expanded. It will become a mansion. And from it, there will be a person who has nice face, nice clothes, nice smell. He would say, have a glad tiding. This is your day. Have a glad tiding of the pleasure of Allah. And rivers and paradise to dwell in there forever. This is your day. This is the day you've been promised. The person would say to him, and you are, may Allah give you glad tidings. Who are you? He said, I am your righteous good deed. Verily, I always knew you, that you've been very fast in obeying Allah, very slow in disobeying Allah. May Allah reward you. Khaira. Then it will be opening for him a door to paradise, a door to the hellfire. It will be said to him and made him to look at the hellfire door and they will see his seat there. He said, this is your seat if you had disobeyed Allah. But Allah had exchanged that for seat for you, for that seat in paradise. As soon as he sees paradise, he will say, oh Lord, make the day of resurrection to be fast. So I could go back to my family and my wealth. Allah would say to him, Uskun, stay still. It's not yet time. What about the other journey? The other journey, the Prophet ﷺ talked about the disbeliever. And he said, sorry, my not. The disbeliever, the corrupt, he would give bad answers. A call in the heaven, he would say, he had told the falsehood, he had lied. So he would call, give him his place in hellfire. And open a gate for him, a window for him in the hellfire. So some of the heat, some of the poison, 
some of the pus come